yeah good evening everyone uh, so this uh, session is uh, to uh, address any of your uh, uh, queries if you have any i hope uh, you are following up uh, the sessions you please uh, take time to watch them and also do the practice alongside watching them you ins complete installation of uh, the software uh, qjs 2.3.28.15 uh, uh, long term release uh, please mute uh, uh, everyone uh, please mute yourselves yeah so you install the software and then you can also have the have a look at the third session uh, in which many of the data sources uh, uh, were introduced uh, so you can create uh, login credentials for uh, survey of india online maps using your mobile number as well as email id it will be very useful for uh, downloading the uh, administrative boundaries uh, 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 shape files for india uh, you can you can even uh, download uh, field verified village uh, uh, boundaries uh, district wise for each state you can download and then you can also create an account on usgs uh, explorer uh, for downloading srtm uh, that is a digital elevation model uh, you can download from srtm uh, from usgs explorer for that you can uh, create an account you can also create an account on bhuvan geo portal for downloading Cartodem, uh, which is India's own uh, uh, digital elevation model, uh, which is also at 30 meter resolution. At least for three, uh, these three sites, you please uh, uh, create a login, uh, uh, means register yourself and uh, create uh, credentials for uh, downloading the data. And you can have a look at each and every uh, data source that was mentioned uh, and then you can try to download the data and then try to visualize in your QGIS software by simply dragging the downloaded file on, onto the layers panel uh, for the time being. If you are, uh, have been working on uh, GIS software, you, know, you must be knowing how to uh, load any vector layer, how to load any raster layer that you can do. Uh, but if you are very new to the software, just have a look at the uh, sources by dragging them uh, onto or you can use the browser uh, panel in the QGIS uh, to browse them where they are located uh, if you are downloading uh, them onto your into your downloads folder you can go there and uh, you can select the file and then you can load and see so if we have if you have uh, any of you if you have any issues if you are facing any difficulties uh, in downloading the software or in accessing anything uh, in a, even in accessing the course content, I hope all of you have uh, registered, uh, enrolled for the course. Uh, it is compulsory for you to enroll uh, on uh, the nwapune.gov.in. Uh, um, for our hands-on session, we will be posting the sample data sets on that website, uh, on that uh, portal. In the co you, you will find all the material, training material in the course page. So you must enroll uh, and then access the course page. So, yeah. Now, if anyone wants to ask uh, anything, they can. Good evening, sir. Mm. Good yes, evening. good evening. Yeah. Sir, actually, um, I have a problem. I uh, normally I use uh, the older version of QGIS that is uh, 3.2. But hmm. uh, uh, according to your suggestion, I am uh, try to I I am trying to download it. But several times I have tried it. It uh, after installation, it is shows that uh, some uh, uh, what to say repair is needed. Uh, so I go for what, what what you can do is generally you you can have different versions on the same system. There should not be any issue. But why to uh, why to have different versions unless uh, you have set it up for some specific uh, uh, project and uh, you are used to using the older version why to mm -hmm. keep using the older version you go to control panel you uninstall the uh, qgs which is there uh, um, the you uninstall the program qgs program and then you reinstall the newer version so this problem is arising uh, that i am not uh, uninstall the previous version 
Yeah, generally, I don't know means I generally it should not uh, create any issue, but still there may be some compatibility issue between uh, two different versions. Uh, um, so you can upgrade your uh, to the latest version of uh, QGA. No, I, I've already tried, uh, but uh, same thing happened here also. Mm, have you tried uh, uninstalling the older version? No, I didn't do that because. Oh, okay. I've so, done with this. what you can do is you you uh, uninstall uh, both of them, uh, and then uh, you try to install the latest version again. Okay. Without any uh, program uh, installed in your system, QGS uh, uh, older uh, version, first you uninstall uh, everything and then you try to install. Okay, sir. Thank you. Mm. You try to run the software as an administrator by right clicking yeah, the inst uh, installer file and check uh, run as an administrator. Yeah. yeah, after this part, when I'm clicking to open the software, that time it is showing that uh, some repair is needed. So I go for that also Achha. long term time. Uh, uh, you are, um, uh, what is the configuration like uh, is the not even right so uh, you are using the no, uh, no, no, no. uh, 10. Uh, 10. 10 10 no issue if you are using there, there is also 64 bit uh, also here. Uh, yeah. okay yeah because the latest versions they only work on 64 bit missions yeah yeah, yeah. i have this okay. Okay. according to you can you can try to yeah yeah you can uh, try to uninstall everything and then uh, reinstall. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Tomorrow at what time the class will start? Tomorrow, the, the all uh, sessions uh, will be recorded sessions, so they will be uploaded. Uh, first session will be uploaded at ten o'clock. Second session will be uploaded at uh, eleven thirty. Okay. Uh, then uh, after. In the afternoon, the, again, there will be two sessions. After lunch, two o'clock, one session. And then 3.30, uh, there will be another session. All will be All recorded will be sessions. Recorded. But, but we will meet again at 5 o'clock. Please uh, mute. Now, we will meet again at 5 o'clock tomorrow evening uh, to ha have a doubts clearance session. Sir, what is the difference between the most stable version and latest version? And actually, no, nothing much. There may be some bugs uh, in the latest version. Uh, so um, you you can even uh, uh, install the latest version, but because to have uniformity across uh, for everyone, uh, so I try to uh, means I uh, recommended to install the long term release. Long term release uh, is a tested one. You will you will find you will every month almost every month you will be finding a newer version of QGIS being released. Um, so the latest releases there may be some issues, uh, some uh, minor issues which uh, we may not be knowing, but uh, developers they uh, they when uh, they develop in a new version they try to test it. Um, it is always recommended to go for long term release. There will not be much change uh, between the latest and uh, long term release. Sir, uh, so that uh, shape file of village boundaries and administrative boundaries, that hmm. uh, accurate uh, manner seen uh, drafted or uh, just for average? Uh, I could not get actually, it. Actually, yeah. I have to use that uh, administrative boundary and place it and village boundary. But uh -huh, I found uh -huh. it; it's not uh, almost accurate, just for on an average uh, geography. Yeah, the the thing is, uh, it is. Is it, it any other? It, uh, it is. It is. It is not. It is not about accuracy. It is about uh, the authenticated source. Like it is from Survey of India. Then you can uh, mention anywhere uh, if you are doing a, any project. You can mention that the you have used the Survey of India. Uh, shape file, especially when you are working on any government uh, department, it is better to use uh, Survey of India shape file. Um, but uh, there is nothing like accuracy. Accuracy, uh, they, they, it will. It depends upon the who has digitized, who has who has created it. It varies from person to person. Uh, 
so what is the accuracy uh, issue that you faced well, what what is that uh, the village boundaries are not accurate as per you yes sir i have faced a uh, little bit uh, problem about that boundary administrative and village boundary uh, no, you, they you, not, um, you they not match each other like a satellite uh, google satellite or uh, isro satellite image no 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 the thing you see uh, they are not matching uh, with the base map some base, base map, map or yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. The, ba the base map may be in a different projection, uh, maybe, but uh, these are, uh, see, this, these uh, uh, Survey of India shape files are uh, having a projection system of uh, LCC, which is Lambert uh, Conformal uh, Conic, uh, which is a, a recommended uh, projected coordinate system for India. India, see, uh, if you uh, have a, a look, I will also be sharing one document uh, on a gentle introduction to QGIS, uh, not, not QGIS, a gentle introduction to GIS. Uh, this document uh, is, it comes along with the QGIS documentation. Uh, it is uh, not specifically about the QGIS, but it, it, in general, it introduces the GIS uh, about the G concept of geographic information system. I will share the PDF in the course uh, for, um, uh, page. So where you can go through uh, about uh, map projections component. So map projections, uh, we have every location, uh, every locality uh, uh, has its, uh, is, uh, they have, uh, they can, use, it depends upon the purpose where you, uh, for which you are using. Um, so every projected coordinate system will distort. It may distort the, if you want to preserve shape, it will, uh, pre uh, preserve, it will distort the uh, size. Uh, if you want to um, preserve the area, it will distort uh, something else. So uh, for uh, gen generally uh, for uh, la equate regions which are near the equator, they go for cylindrical projection systems. For uh, India, it is better to go for this LCC projection. So this Survey of India maps are in this LCC projection system. Project, uh, so you need to have conceptual clarity about uh, what actually map projection means, um, or what are those EPSG codes, etc. We will come in the coming sessions. You will understand uh, many more things. Uh, I will be sharing that uh, introductory document on uh, GIS. This course, as I am, I am repeatedly saying, this is meant for uh, those who are at begin, be, beginners. That means who are at, at a uh, beginning level uh, who want to learn uh, QGIS, uh, sorry, GIS and remote sensing. And the QGIS is our tool. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, I'm Rangarajan from DRMB. Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah, but... Good evening, yes. uh, The lecture is very good. And uh, yeah. it's fine. Uh, tomorrow, at what time it will start? Uh, tomorrow, we will upload first session at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, tomorrow, all the four sessions will be recorded sessions. Recorded sessions, okay. Uh, at 5 o'clock in the evening, we will meet uh, for uh, doubts clearance in, oh. in the same way. Okay, tomorrow then we have to work on it. Yeah, you have to, you have to follow up. Uh, I will, I will, uh, again, I am, I will uh, suggest everyone to, uh, do, don't just watch the video. You uh -huh. please uh, follow the instruction and you, you do the practice. And uh, tomorrow we will be also be sharing the data file uh, okay. on, on, on which you have to work. So you. you can, uh, Keep take pauses. You can stop the video, pause it, and then you do the follow the instructions and then come back. So that is uh, in that way you can complete the hands-on session. Even if it takes more time, you please uh, do that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, first of all, thank you for this uh, beautiful lecture series. Uh, actually, sir, I have uh, RGIS software installed in my PC. So, uh, mm -hmm. can I practice uh, my uh, QGIS learning simultaneously on RGIS software also? See, the uh, basically both are GIS application. Please mute. Please mute uh, the mic. Okay. 
yeah so uh, you you can you the the type of tools and the interface will be different in arcgis uh, in qgis it it will be different you can use the same data like you can open the same shape files in uh, either arcgis or qgis you can uh, do the same operations but uh, interface and the the type of tools uh, they will be different at least actually sir i am already learning uh... RGIS software. Okay, so you have it, it on your uh, personal system. Yes, sir. Yeah, then uh, even then also you can learn QGIS. No issue. Yes, uh, you, for this course, we have designed it for QGIS because not all have access to proprietary software like RGIS. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. But you can you can look you for can look the for functionalities in RGIS. Yes, sir. Same functionalities. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. It was a nice lecture. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sir, uh, since I am very much new to this QGIS, um, I'm <clears throat> first time I am uh, introducing with such type of uh, topic. So uh, I am working in irrigation department. How this uh, tool helps me in, in my work? Yeah, you will see in the when it comes to digitization of uh, uh, canal network, we will have a session on digitizing uh, irrigation assets. Uh, suppose uh, you have uh, acquired satellite imagery. If you you want to create, uh, you want to map your uh, assets. If you are working in a particular area of ir uh, irrigation command, you can uh, map, uh, and then you can prepare uh, maps. Uh, on QGIS map uh, layout, layout uh, you, just like uh, in, in paper map, uh, you cannot, uh, you don't have generally the flexibility of choosing what to represent. Um, so he, in QGIS, if you can digitize your assets, irrigation assets, you can create maps and you can uh, make use of it for uh, managing the project. That is one application. And uh, there are means at your level, I am not sure, but if, if there if something is uh, related to uh, irrigation water management, uh, then um, at the policy level, they want to have a look at how uh, one part of the command is performing um, and uh, how uh, the water, uh, how uh, to assess the water use efficiency of a part of a command, making use of uh, uh, des data sets like evapotranspiration data sets. Evapotranspiration uh, gives you an indication about crop water usage, right? So such things uh, can be done. You can do the water balance uh, studies by taking the precipitation uh, data set, evapotranspiration data set, and the soil moisture data sets. So it is, uh, you have to explore, uh, but the simple application, which I can think of, uh, which can be used in the day-to-day -day, um, work is uh, mapping. Uh, it will be very useful. Yeah. Okay, so in sir, this connection, you. may I ask one thing? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, sir, I need to know that uh, particularly which kind of specific satellite imagery or data set is uh, suitable to the present uh, either uh, vegetation cover or soil moisture detection or some uh, water resource with specific satellite imagery is suitable for that. We use uh, uh, any kind of satellite imageries or particularly. See, you generally go for high resolution imagery and in uh, yeah. as we have in the, the best available uh, pub, uh, open access yeah. uh, Imagery is a 10 meter uh, sentinel tool. Please uh, mute it. Yeah. So it, uh, generally, we want to have high resolution uh, imagery, uh, spatial uh, resolution imagery. So um, Sentinel-2 is better, but Sentinel-2 uh, will have the issue of uh, cloud cover during monsoon period because it is optical uh, imagery, optical remote sensing, as you have uh, seen in the session today. Passive remote sensing, uh, it has the issues. Uh, 
and by, and you want to use radar uh, imagery then it is not an it is difficult to deal with the radar images uh, but uh, it depends on the application like if you want to map the flood extent or flood inundation that is a different thing uh, that, then you can go for radar images sentinel one otherwise you can go for sentinel two Landsat is available at 30 meters and now uh, you can even ha have access to the isro data sets uh, the the um, you can have a look at bunidi uh, to look for uh, various kinds of uh, uh, data sets collected by indian remote sensing satellites basically these are multi spectral satellite imagery will be used for identification of features on the surface of the earth by using different band combinations uh, using true color false color composites and by making use of band indices like for vegetation you can ndvi is a well known index similarly for delineation of water bodies ndwi is there these are for optical remote sensing we will see one uh, the, 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 we have a session on land use land cover mapping where we will be using sentinel 2 imagery for mapping of uh, land use covers is um, the output of lease image is not so good i think uh, this. for this land cover map i have used it but, but the output is not so much good see land use land cover is always uh, it will be never uh, be accurate because uh, uh, of many things like uh, it may be due to cloud cover, due to shadows, due to atmospheric disturbance, the signature, the, the kind of training input that you are giving for uh, preparing LULC map. There will also uh, always be, whenever you do LULC mapping, there will be uh, also, you are, will also be doing the accuracy assessment. Uh, so it all depends on uh, how many uh, training sites you are choosing if you are doing the supervised classification from field if you have the information um, and, and uh, whether the training sites are covering the entire image whether there are enough number of training sites so and then also the size of the pixel i think this uh, i think it has 23.5 meters resolution right maybe yes uh, so sentinel, sentinel 2 is available yeah. at 10 meters so it is 10 better. meters resolution, yeah yes. it is better uh, commercial satellites they are available even at much better resolution but you have to spend money on acquiring high resolution imagery thank you sir for a lot of uh, for a hello sir yeah yeah sir uh, which type of lulc map will be better uh, one uh, prepared with the help of gis software or second uh, uh, one uh, uh, when we uh, download it from google earth engine google earth engine means you you mean uh, ready made uh, land use land cover map yes sir yeah well, modi is uh, something like uh, yes sir yeah you so, know which one will be better see uh, you can if you if you can maintain quality if you are uh, please mute uh, one, once you ask the question please uh, mute yourselves uh, see if you are uh, working on a specific area of interest uh, for which you have very good uh, sample ground truth information and you can prepare very good training data set to train your model then uh, it is better to go for uh, uh, doing uh, preparing your own land use land cover map but uh, because global land land use land cover maps they are they are prepared at global level they may not be very accurate but then they have some quality checks uh, they 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 must have done uh, uh, quality checking and uh, it is uh, given by some authentic authentic source only so uh, 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 you can make use of it like you you have you, uh, ESA uh, European Space Agency the, the, the making use of the Sentinel-2 imagery they have come out with uh, uh, dynamic land cover uh, data set which is also available at 10 meter resolution 
you can directly make use of it but i i will suggest if you can collect good quality data from ground for which you have access whereas the global data sets uh, those who have prepared the global da data sets they may not have they might not uh, consider the actual uh, ground uh, data so you can prepare a better map thank you sir for ground uh, no uh, someone is suggesting to use hindi but i think we have to take care of uh, all uh, the participants and because the software itself uh, all the functionality is in uh, english so i think we will continue with uh, english only and how it is uh, helpful for groundwater exploration uh, there is a question in uh, uh, chat box uh, see for groundwater exploration uh, if you uh, search uh, the uh, NRSC website they have prepared some uh, maps uh, of uh, ground uh, it is specifically it is known like just give me one minute i will tell you the name uh, groundwater groundwater prospects mapping uh, if you search by, uh, with this uh, with the, these keywords groundwater prospects mapping and nrsc you will be uh, uh, seeing uh, the these prospects map uh, which were made on the basis of uh, geology uh, like uh, the surface geology itself like how uh, the, depending upon the terrain and depending upon the uh, whether uh, the uh, means it is just a prospects map it, it is not accurately because ground with remote sensing you cannot see what is beneath the surface of the earth but you can uh, just uh, have some idea whether you can find uh, groundwater in that area or not so they have I am I, I I don't know much about this sub, a particular subject but uh, NRSC has prepared these maps and these maps have been for a long time, almost I think uh, ten, ten, more than 10 years or 15 years. These maps uh, have, are being used by state government departments uh, for uh, digging wells, uh, for uh, groundwater uh, exploration, they have been using it. Yeah, if you are using uh, 2.18, I will suggest uh, you install the latest version um, but then uh, you must be having uh, uh, bet uh, means uh, you must be having 64 bit machine uh, which is common nowadays and you must be working on windows uh, above windows 7 you should not be if you are using windows 7 uh, you may face some issues with the new new versions of the qgis it is always better to upgrade at the same time, uh, you, even if you continue with the different versions on the same system, uh, I have been using different versions of QGIS on the same system. I never faced any issue. But uh, today I faced, uh, I, I, so someone uh, asked me about the compatibility issue. If uh, I don't know if it is creating any issue, but generally you can have different versions. You can continue with uh, QGIS 2.18 and uh, the latest 3.28 LTR uh, also, you can install on the same system. How can we classify LULC using photogrammetry data? See, I um, uh, that um, see we, we will not be. Uh, I am not uh, competent enough uh, to uh, uh, speak of uh, photogrammetry methods, uh, drone survey. These are the topics for which you will you can uh, attend uh, the uh, the courses uh, and you can speak to someone uh, who works in that area but here we will just use the one plugin uh, which is available so uh, semi automatic classification plugin uh, for uh, doing the supervised classification using the sentinel 2 imagery that i will teach using drone survey See if you uh, what I think is uh, if if you can collect very high resolution uh, multispectral imagery from uh, the drone surveys, definitely you will uh, you can do better uh, LULC mapping. But photogrammetry method is uh, I am not aware. 
data sets related to irrigation are available free or chargeable now what kind of data sets i am unable to understand um, you can uh, clarify it drainage pattern water body identification purpose mm -hmm. Water, water body or identification you can sorry Achha, et evapor transpiration yeah see is i am talking of uh, public uh, open access data sets evapor transpiration uh, is something uh, which cannot be measured directly from space it is a product uh, after uh, may, uh, through energy balance method after taking other data sets into account uh, temperature solar irradiance so it gives some estimate about uh, 56 are total hmm. sorry ah uh, yeah et data sets give you some uh, understanding about how water is being utilized uh, in any irrigation command if it is a final resolution data set um you can prepare uh, et data sets using other uh, inputs climate because et evapotranspiration depends please mute yourselves so uh, um, if you can use many energy balance method there are many uh, algorithms like sibal uh there are some uh, uh, data sets like vapor which gives you water productivity uh, and uh, evapotranspiration information also uh, final resolution uh, data sets are there if you come across such uh, uh, data set you can just uh, explore it and try to clip uh, the data set for any irrigation command area and if you can get any field information about the canal religious you can just try to correlate and you can see whether it is giving you a better picture at larger scale at basin scale definitely the et data sets will give you some idea about water utilization patterns at finer scale it may not be because the resolution of the et data set itself may be uh, quite uh, low. LULC map prepared through GIS software or LULC map prepared through AI machine learning model, which gives accurate results. It it again it 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 all depends. Even GIS software also it uses super uh, some model. Uh, you have to give better training. Uh, in case of even a machine learning model also you have to give better inputs then it can give you better output it is as simple as that definitely my machine if you are if you have very good uh, uh, input data set uh, definitely a machine learning model will give you a accurate uh, result drainage pattern water body identification see water body identification uh, for drainage pattern we can use the digital elevation model we will when we do the catchment delineation uh, part we will see how to generate the streamlines that we will cover uh, but it depends upon the accuracy of the dem the dem which we will use is uh, 30 meter resolution whether it is srtm or uh, Carto DM uh, at 30 meter resolution, you may not be have, uh, having very accurate results. If you are working at basin scale or sub basin scale, it is fine. Uh, but if you are working uh, at a very uh, uh, smaller area, uh, LIDAR uh, means that you can have a better dam using LIDAR survey that will give you better results. And then for water body identification, uh, you have this in a normalized difference water index. Uh, which you can apply on uh, multispectral imagery using uh, by taking green and NIR bands. Uh, it can simply uh, give you uh, the uh, pixels. Uh, you, you have to decide a threshold uh, between land and water pixels uh, by observing uh, the data. 
the pixel the the NDWI values of the pixel. And once you decide the threshold, you can map the water bodies. That is using optical uh, remote sensing. Uh, using the radar uh, means uh, using a synthetic aperture radar images, uh, Sentinel one uh, images. You can uh, all you can all you can also map uh, water bodies um, because uh, water bodies uh, they appear very dark because they are for low backscatter uh, in case of radar remote sensing. So water bodies identification is uh, very easy when it comes to be but then you have to verify you have to verify it from the field um, and we predict lulc map for upcoming years see these are general questions which i cannot answer but the, see definitely we can we give if you have a trend you have if you have seen a trend of lulc change uh, definitely you can predict um, by but then every prediction uh, will be associated with uh, some uh, probability the, you, you have to uh, qualify that uh, and then uh, um, you need to have long term data sets for uh, such prediction which you may not be having Right. If you want to predict the, how the land use land cover is changing, that means you need to have the act, land use land cover maps for many years. That may not be the case. In, instead of downloading data from different websites, can we use some of the plugins? Yes, we can definitely use some of the plugins. Uh, like open uh, topography plugin can be used for accessing the SRTM data set in QGIS. Similarly, Sentinel Hub plugin can be used for accessing uh, sentinel imagery but uh, this as a this, because uh, this is a basic course people first need to understand what actually uh, uh, is a multispectral imagery how many bands will be there so better uh, to download and visualize by look at the bands and then understand things so that's why we are teaching and also google earth engine definitely google earth engine can also be connected to QGIS using, using a plugin, but not all functionalities will be available. Uh, you can directly use a Google Earth Engine for doing all kind of analysis without downloading any data set. Basin data set where it is available. Ba basin data set, I think I have covered the hydro basis uh, data, uh, which is part of the hydro sheds. It has uh, basin uh, data set at various levels, level one to level 12. Uh, the you can download the polygons the but uh, the uh, the how the basin delineation has been done uh, automatically means that there was uh, you 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 will not have the choice of choosing the outlet point or pore point for that you need to do the delineation on your own where we can download shape file for water bodies Shape file for um, water bodies, I am not sure. There is one uh, water body information uh, system uh, which is available on Bowen portal. Uh, and, uh, the, the, there you can get uh, uh, trend analysis of uh, water spread area of many water bodies, even sm small water bodies. Uh, I, I am not sure if there is any uh, provision for downloading the data. But you can uh, look in the Google Earth Engine data catalog. Uh, there is one Global Surface Water Explorer. There is a data set known as GSW, Global Surface Water Explorer, uh, which uh, gives the pro uh, occurrence, uh, percentage occurrence of uh, uh, water. That is, uh, if, the, if it is a permanent water body, it will have high percentage occurrence, more than 90 percentage. If it is a it is a rim area of a reservoir it will be having uh, less percentage so there is one data set which uh, which has this information and there is also an info information on permanent water bodies um, that is uh, use, making use of landsat data they have prepared this data set global surface water explorer you can have a look at it maybe you can use it there are other uh, data sets also 
you can uh, look in Google Earth Engine data catalog for water bodies. So basin data set, I think in the session, third session, I had covered hydro basins. If you search hydro sheds in uh, Google, you will uh, find hydrosheds.org, which is a website. Uh, it, was, it, it, it was developed by World Wide Life uh, for Nature, WWF, uh, World Wide Fund for Nature. Uh, so they have taken SRTM uh, digital elevation model as an input, and then they have derived uh, these files of uh, basin polygons, as well as river systems, river na network. You can do download uh, the polygons uh, at various levels from one to two that I had demonstrated in my uh, in uh, the last session, session number three. You can easily find it and you can download the data. But I repeat, uh, uh, the it may, it may not uh, serving uh, your purpose because uh, it was done uh, automatically, uh, means it was done on the basis of some rules like uh, where to delineate a subcatchment depending upon the uh, area of the catchment. So if you are looking for basin boundaries, uh, catchment area at a particular uh, point, uh, you may not uh, find such layers readily available. You have to do the catchment delineation on your own. So I think there are more general questions. I, I, I would like to uh, answer if there are any uh, questions related to the content that has been covered today. In uh, whether if you are facing any issue in access content, bring it up because it's a very uh, basic level course, I repeat. Uh, and we will try to go slow, uh, but we will try to cover uh, as much as possible in uh, five days. So the sessions may be a bit lengthy, but I will suggest you to follow up and complete uh, uh, while watching. You also do the practice so that you, you have the conceptual clarity of uh, what is uh, vector data set, what is shape file, what is geo database, what is geo package. All these things will be covered. Uh, we'll also cover plugins and then in the la on the last day if someone wants to look forward for a uh, uh, high-end use uh, they uh, we will have QGS customization using Python that will also be covered on the last day so if there are no further uh, queries uh, specific queries uh, we can uh, conclude the session Yes, sir. Uh, anyone else? So tomorrow we will upload the first uh, session at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, working with the vector data. There will be two hands-on sessions uh, on uh, working with vector data. Sample data will also be uploaded in the e-learning platform. And the second session uh, on working with vector data will be uploaded at 11.30. And in the afternoon, we will be having uh, two sessions. Uh, one session on uh, uh, creating a basic map using QGIS, how to prepare maps using the uh, by using various map elements in uh, QGIS. And then we will have a short session uh, in the evening on uh, georeferencing a scanned map. So these are the topics which will be covered tomorrow. All are recorded sessions. All will be, uh, they will be uploaded. Uh, uh, I will be uh, letting you whenever I upload in uh, the WhatsApp group. And you can follow them up. Tomorrow also we will meet at five o'clock to address any of the issues that you may you may face you are facing okay then thank you very much thank you sir good night thank you thank you sir